Big Story. Edward, what are you doing here? The judge said... I know what the judge said, but I'm still your husband. What do you want here? I came for my painting. The judge said you couldn't come here. Myrtle, I'm warning you, don't make a scene. Don't you touch that painting. Get out of my way. Don't you touch that painting. You can't help it. Let go of me. I warn you. Oh. My eyes. My eyes. What did you do to me? Edward. Edward. Ohio. The stories that actually happened, Buss Bergen's story as he lived it. You are on the criminal court seat in July, Buss Bergen, reporter for the Cleveland Press. It's hot work pounding the grimy marble floors sifting the routine violence and misery back through the phone to the board rewrite man at the press. When the time comes to check back at the office, you hoist your tired feet on your desk and kill a half hour checking the early editions to see if they spell the names right in your story. But today, you only get as far as the box stores on the front page. Hey, Bergen. Yeah. Hey, boss, get the keys on the floor. And have the blood rush out of my head? Not on your life. Look, I got a call in from Lakewood. Fight between a husband and wife. May the best man win. It's a good address, maybe a story in it. Oh, look, hey, Wiley, I put in a hot day chasing bail bond runners. All right, come on, come on, out. We got 40 minutes till the stock edition. Oh. Grab a company car and get out there. Ooh. When are they going to get wall-to-wall carpeting at the courthouse? Come on, come on, move. This isn't a handset weekly. You got 40 minutes to deadline. Now get out there and wrap it up. Forty minutes to the stock division. Forty minutes when they lock up the farms and the presses roll with the Dow Jones closing stock averages and the bulb stores complete to the top of the third. You grab a company coupe and push it out to the manicured lawn neighborhood in Lakewood, Ohio. There's a squad car parked in the gravel turnaround and Sergeant Al Gorlick of the Lakewood Police is holding the forehead of a thin kid in a gray sweatshirt and corduroy pants. The kid is sick. Good news, sir. How about it, Sergeant? I got a half hour of the stock tradition. That's all I know, Bergen. Oh. Easy, kid. I'm all right. I'm all right, I think. What happened to the kid? He ain't got a lung full. I won't be able to go to class tonight. As a captain, I won't be able to... Oh, oh. All right, son, I got you. Uh, you found Mrs. Peters? She's lying there. Not often. No. Oh. How am I going to study for my test? I go tonight. Sure, sure. Uh, look, uh, there was a fight, right? Mrs. Peters was shouting at Mr. Peters. And when she screamed and he came running up, and I went in and... No, no. What smells? Gas. Gas? What gas? Rat poison. It was all over the room. He had it in the paper bag. The crystals broke and gave off poison gas. Where's Mrs. Peters now? Lakewood Hospital. Hey, where are you going? The telephone. Don't you want to look at the house? No time. I've got 28 minutes to deadline. 28 minutes to deadline. You haven't got time for color, for background, for explanation. Just a raw story in unshaded black and white, poured back over the phone to the press. P as in Paul, E-T-E-R-S, Peters, manufacturer. You've seen his picture in the business section. Legally separated, fight, big fight. He tears out the door. A college kid, Philip 1L, L-E-V-I-N, finds her out cold. Rat poison all over the room. Okay. Nice touch, I'm going over to the hospital to check Mrs. Peters. Now, hold the story for upcoming. You've got 23 minutes to deadline. Not 
inside the hospital room, there's a sergeant on guard. His face is nervously as an expectant father. You can almost hear the second picking away the deadline. Can't I even get a statement from you, Sergeant? What do you want me to tell you? I'm no doctor. They won't even let me see you. My own flesh and blood. You're related to Mrs. Peter? She's my sister. My memory lasts just in pain still. Oh, two S's in Lassiter? I warned Myrtle Slice in her own living room. I told her a man that would do the things that would Peter did had evil written right on his forehead in letters of fire. Uh -huh. I warned her right in her own living room. Myrtle, what I said... things did Peter do? Other women. He was always running oh, around... Oh, excuse me. Uh, Doctor... Uh, uh, Doctor, I'm Buss Bergen of the press. What's the story on that gas? There's a patent rat poison. The crystals on the neck and face in the brother in. Oh, that did it, huh? I've seen gas cases before as police surgeons. In my opinion, there must have been enough loot to fumigate the whole house. Well, can I talk to her now? Talk to her? That was fine, I guess. She's dead. <laughs> Peters died four minutes ago. Cyanide gas. Got that, Wiley? Right. Now wrap it up and you're on the front page. Well, what do you mean, wrap it up? What more do you want? A lead on the killer. And if you get me Peters arrest, I'll hold deadline. Hey, listen, he could be halfway out in Lake Erie swimming for Canada by now. Sure, sure. Full weapon blames his tools. Why, Come you... Come on, bus. Tie it all up in a pretty pink package. You'd have 15... Hey, Wiley, minutes. Wiley, hold the line. You kidding? Bus, get moving. Hold the line, Wiley, and get a photographer out here. Where? City Hospital. Crazy, we can't run pictures of the I know, I know, but you can run pictures of her husband, can't you? He's coming down the hall now. Now, hold the line. Uh, can I help you? Oh, yes, if you'd be so kind. I'm Edward Peters. Yeah, I've seen your picture. Oh? I'm looking for room 304. 304? Uh, it's right around the corner. You're looking for someone special? My wife. I, uh, I called the house, and they told me that she'd had a slight accident. They told you? Yes, I thought I'd drop over, and, well, thank you very much. Uh, tell me about that slight accident. I beg your pardon. I'm Buss Bergen of the Cleveland Press. The reporter? Well, I'm sure the press wouldn't be interested in a minor household accident. You don't want to make a statement? I am for a public relations counsel who handles all of my contacts with the press. Now, if you'll excuse oh, me. Oh, no, Mr. Peters. This is one story that we can't run from a mimeograph handout. What are you talking about? Rat poison, cyanide gas. Are you crazy? Get out of my way, young man. I want to see my wife. You wait, Mr. Hey, Peters. 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 Oh, what is this? What's going on? I insist you're Edward Peters. Well, of course I met with Peters. You want to make a statement about what happened at your house this afternoon? No. Oh. oh, of course. There was uh, an argument between my wife and myself. I I hit her with a bag of rat poison. Took my pain. Let me at that. All oh, right, right, Peters. I'm arresting you for the murder of Wiley, you still there? What's going on? Shut up and take this. Lakewood Police Sergeant Al Gorlick arrested Edward Peters for the murder of his wife, Myrtle, at City Hospital outside the room in which the victim's body lay. You stringing me? He came walking in here like a cat eating canary pie. It's a lead pipe cinch, Wiley. He's been out playing the field, had a fight with his wife, and slugged her with the rat poison. Then figured he could beat the rat by hollering accident. This one's cold turkey, open and shut all the way, wrapped up for the socks in 40 minutes. <laughs> the morning paper have the sending. You've got the break story, and that's what counts. You work fast, but sometimes it can be too fast. Sometimes you chase a headline down the road so fast, you overlook the small, telltale signs that shout a warning to the reporter. Slow up. Take a second look. Think. With a deadline hanging over you, you'll wrap up a story in a neat, quick package. And when you tear off the pretty ribbon and the party wrapping, the story isn't there at all. You nail the headline down, Buck Bergen. Charged industrialist with poison slaying of Lakewood White. The who, what, where, when, and how of the lead paragraph is complete. And now you can take your time. It was open and shut, cardboard characters on a black and white setting. And now you want to fill in the gray. I can give you five minutes, Mr. Bergen. Thanks, Sergeant. 
Good evening, Mr. Peters. Huh? Oh, you're the reporter, aren't you? I thought maybe you might have a statement to make. I saw your article, Bergen. You've got it all wrong. You're making a terrible mistake. I quoted the district attorney, the coroner, and your own confession. You don't understand. That wasn't a confession. I hit her with a bag of rat poison and took my painting. Now, what do you call it? But I meant... Never mind. Look, Mr. Peters, this is your chance to tell your side of the story. I'm afraid I'd better tell my side of the story in court, Mr. Bergen. You want to cooperate, don't you? You want to break in the paper? Mr. Bergen, this whole affair is a gross misunderstanding. I have a very expensive and competent lawyer on retainer, and I think he is best qualified to look after my interests. Look, Peters, let me give you a friendly tip. This is a big story. The wire services have it already. You'll probably be in jail for several months before the trial is over and we'll have to keep your case alive all that time. Isn't that your problem? Sure, sure. Every paper in town will have to have angles on you. Do you know what angles mean? How'd you get along with your wife? Details on your business. There are reporters around who won't stop there. They'll dig up scandal, other women, gossip. Well, nobody wants that. This is your chance to give me the straight story. My lawyers are Delahanty and Cole. They'll issue any statements. That's all, Mr. Bergen. Goodbye. You've covered a hundred murders. You've seen killers you liked, and some you pitied, and some you were indifferent to. But this one, you hate. I'll tell you, Wiley, he got my ghost. In a cell, a first-degree rap on him on three counts. Premeditated, murder and commission of a burglary, and murder by cyanide gas. And he's cool as killed cucumber. I got expensive lawyers. I just bet he has. You got a follow-up color piece, Buzz? Not yet. I've seen him before, Wiley. A murderer who thinks he can buy an acquittal with a blank check. You had 40 minutes to wrap up this story. And now you go back to pick up the pieces. Painfully, over the next two weeks, you reconstruct the life of Edward and Myrtle Peters. From the flat stereotype of the headlines, you see a man emerge in three dimensions. You heard them fighting, Philip? Sure, Mr. Burton. I was waiting for the bus. I got a night school at Western Reserve. I used to work for Mr. Peters at the house, turning the hedge and stuff. Uh-huh. You know, it was a funny thing. After they were separated, I, I used to see him standing across the street. Didn't go in. Sometimes he'd wait until it was dark. He didn't look mad at all. Just kind of sad, like he wished it hadn't happened. You warned your sister against your husband, Mrs. Lassiter? I never trusted Edward, Mr. Bergen. I told Myrtle she should listen to her sister. Ah, oh, but she was dazzled, blinded by the wealth of evil. Beware of grief staring gifts, I always told her. <laughs> Never trusted the master to take my husband's kidneys. Why should he pay for his operation? That's what I told my husband. Just trying to make it the holding to him. <laughs> Just don't trust a man like that. <laughs> I promise you, it's off the record. Look, Bergen, you can't break this if it comes out in the trial. But the wife had a private operator tailing Peters for 10 years. They were looking for divorce evidence. But you know, it's a funny thing. She had five hundred even after the separation, he kept it in her name. Slowly, the picture fills in. It appears to be open and shut. But now you see the complications fogging your nice, clear story. If you write the background, you illustrate it with pictures of Peter's country place. You listen as Wiley leaves it. Boy, what a layout. Arabian horses, swimming pools, shooting galleries, and a concrete bomb shelter. <laughs> and then there's bomb shelter won't save them now. Hey, that's an angle. Yeah, I'm getting tired of angles, Wiley. How about people? What's the matter, Buzz? You feeling sorry for the guy? No, no. You can't feel sorry for him. He's too calm, too cool. He sits in that jail and runs his business from a cell. Don't talk to me or any other reporter. 
And his lawyer just brushed his lint off a $200 suit and cleared his throat. So what's eating you? You're riding nice and nasty, but your heart ain't in it. Getting mixed up, Wiley. I thought I had it clear, but the whole picture's getting foggy. Now, cheer up the trousers on tomorrow, and you can nail Peter to the wall. That's what you want, isn't it? Sure, sure, that's what I want. Wiley, I'm going down to the jail and talk to Peters again. Okay, Bergen, you two fire. Thanks, Sergeant. Good morning, Mr. Peters. Okay, okay. Maybe I've got this coming. My attorney has shown me your articles, Mr. Bergen. He advises me that, unfortunately, I have no legal recourse against him. Yeah, we've got a good lawyer, too. I want to talk to you, Mr. Peters. I've been on this case from the beginning. They pinned the medal on me down in the city room for wrapping it all up in 40 minutes. But you know, I think maybe I'd have done better to run out of dimes before I phoned in the story. I don't know what you mean, Mr. Bergen, and I'm not interested. Well, maybe you should be. I've been talking to people about you. That, that Levin kid next door and your sister-in-law. I'm not interested in what she has to say. Sure, she hates you inside. But she told me you paid for her husband's operation. She works at the plant, doesn't she? And the state employment service told me you hired parolee to give him a break. My business practice is my own concern. Yeah, but uh, it interests me. Mr. Peters, on the outside, you're a stuffed shirt. I would have seen you executed cheerfully. But... Maybe that stuff in is isn't all hay. The wife is dead. Please, Mr. Virgin. You still loved her, didn't you? Even after the separation. We got your insurance under her name. You voluntarily doubled the amount of water by the court. I protest, Mr. Virgin. My private life is my own affair. You're stubborn, aren't you? You're stuffy and you're stubborn. But you've got something underneath. I'm not interested in your opinion, Mr. Virgin. I don't blame you. But I've got to live with myself. I'll see you in the courtroom, Mr. Peters. The trial begins. You take your place at the press table with the boys from the locals and the wire service men. You watch Edward Peters across the courtroom. On the surface, he's arrogant, assured, and yet you know he's more than that. You look beneath the surface now to see a man but day by day, the state builds the perfect case. They were fighting. I could hear them way out on the front lawn. There were some screams, and then he came running the time of the arrest, he told me I hit her with a bag of rat poison and took my painting. He signed that statement down at the state house. In my opinion, there must have been enough cyanide gas liberated to fumigate the three-story house. jury room, the long table is crowded with temporary phones. The trial is in its closing days when you sneak out to file a story. Oh, Wiley. Go ahead, by shoot. Defense witnesses are claiming the whole rat poison business was an accident. Peter said he was taking it out to his country place. Claims he only bought it to kill some rats in the cellar. They claim Mrs. Peters died of a heart attack. If they could prove that she wasn't actually killed by the gas, Peters might beat this. Can they prove it? They haven't a chance. The jury can practically smell that rat poison in the courtroom. A police sergeant's testimony nailed the lid on the coffin. Good, good. Is there a recess now? No, no, that last little woman's on the stand. Oh, yeah, I see it coming in on the service ticker. Wiley, I'm going out to Peter's house. Now? Are you crazy? I'm worried. Look, I ran through this story like a knife through butter. It was too fast, Wiley. What are you worried about? Get back in that courtroom. We need your eyewitness stuff. Send another boy, Wiley. I'm going to start all over and cover the story right. You're crazy. You're covering the trial. Who's the ticker? Look, that's a man sitting across the courtroom. I thought for a while he was a headline. Listen, Bergen, you're nuts. Now get back in that courtroom. Bob, you there? Bye, Wiley. <laughs> you push the company soup out to Lakewood. This may cost your job, but this time you're going to cover it right. You're going to get the story of people, not headlines in black and white. Out at the Peters house, you find Philip Levin on the lawn, playing with a brown and white pocket of sun. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Go on. Get the ball. Get the ball. Go. Oh. Hello, Philip. Oh, hi, Mr. Bergen. I, I saw you at the court. Yeah. I want to talk to you, Philip. Well, you already? Yeah, I know, I know. But this time, I kind of want to take it easy. 
You said you used to see Mr. Peters standing across the street at night. Sure, lots of times. After the separation? Yeah. Funny, isn't it? Mm. Get a girl, nice. Come on, leave the ball. Come on. Okay. Okay, go. Uh, did he look mad? Uh, Mr. Peters? Uh-huh. Oh, no. You know, Mr. Bergen, I, I don't think Mr. Peters wanted that separation. No? I think he still loves it. I guess he comes. A nice cocker spaniel. Your dog? Judy? Oh, no. She was Mrs. Peters. I'm just taking care of her. I'm down to <laughs> You'd think the dog would know. I mean, she's so happy. <laughs> hey, get off my pants. Oh, she knows, all right. You should have seen the day of the murder, growling and snapping. Mm, took it hard, huh? Yeah. The policeman couldn't get her away from Mrs. Peters. Judy wouldn't let him close enough to even touch her. The dog was in the house? Sure, she was in the house all the time. Worked it, Trudy. Yeah. This, this dog was in the room all the time? She's still alive, isn't she? You're alive, aren't you, Trudy? I ran right over it. I thought I had the story nailed down in 40 minutes, and I missed it by a mile. Come on, Trudy. You're coming with me. Well, where are you going, Mr. Bergen? Trudy and I are going for a ride. <laughs> Bus. You can't smuggle a dog into that courtroom. I've got him this far, haven't I, Wiley? Quiet, too. Do you want to be held in contempt? Hey, look, there's a defense attorney. Go ahead, Buck. Make your pitch. Oh, Mr. Allen. Mr. Allen. I'm sorry. I'm very busy. Mr. Allen, this is very important. Uh, look, court reconvenes in five minutes. Wait a minute. Oh, you're the man from press, aren't you? Yeah, look, this will only take a... Take... Trudy, is that a dog under your coat? It's your star witness, Mr. Allen. Trudy was in the room when Mrs. Peters got her lung full of gas. You sure about that? I can get you the witnesses. Look, state claims there was enough cyanide loose to kill Mrs. Peters. Trudy only weighs about 10 pounds. If the state is right, she should be cold as a man. Well, <laughs> Mrs. Peters couldn't have died from the cyanide. This is the evidence you need to prove she died of a heart attack. All right, Bergen, you keep that dog here. I'm going to move her in the German. This is all we need. And don't lose that dog. <laughs> yes, is this sure? I checked with the state toxicologist. They can't convict now. Why didn't that cop mention the dog on the stand? I asked him. He said, nobody asked me. They would have convicted an innocent man. I thought you didn't like Peters. I didn't. That's what threw me off. I rushed that story through in 40 minutes. I let myself be fooled by my own neat black and white headlines. I didn't have time to find out what really happened. But I can sure write this story now, Wiley. The whole story. And truly, we'll illustrate it with your picture on page one. Now we read you that telegram from Buzz Bergen of the Cleveland Press. When the defense attorney introduced evidence of small dogs that survived the gas, experts testified it would be impossible for gas to have been the cause of death. There was no evidence to prove premeditation. Jury brought in verdict of not guilty. Edward Peters was released and returned to his manufacturing business. So ends another big story. In order to protect the names of people actually involved in tonight's authentic big story, the names of all characters in the dramatization were changed, with the exception of the newspaper reporter.